side. Wave goodbye to the folks still waiting in line. Goodbye! We'll miss you! <laughs> you don't know those people. We do not. know those people. Oh, bye Felicia! All right, we're leaving the theme park behind and taking you deep into the heart of our studio. This is where some of Hollywood's biggest names come to work every single day. All right, we're going to head down this hill in just a moment, but before we do, i got to take this moment to bring up my special co-host for the evening. You all know him as the host of tonight's show starring Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, it's, it's literally Jimmy Fallon. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guide. Cody! And the greatest driver. Jamie! You're the best. I love that. Even though Jamie. he owes me five bucks. Ooh. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. That's right, a few safety rules. First and foremost, if you're in need of guest assistance, like you have a medical emergency, or you've dropped an item of value off the side of the tram, or if you're having any sound or video issues, reach up and pull that red emergency cord overhead. The ride will stop, and I'll be back to help you as soon as it is safe for you to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated. Now, the studio is private property, so if at any time during the tour you drop your cell phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, please pull that cord and remain seated. Also keep in mind, there is no smoking allowed on today's tour, and the use of selfie sticks is prohibited. Now, we are going to have quite a few loud noises, as well as sudden tram movements and water effects on tonight's tour, but don't worry, guys, you're not going to get one unless you're sitting in a blue seat. They're all blue. I feel like Oprah, you get a blue seat, you get a blue seat. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the world famous Universal Studios timeline. Now, as we make our way down this hill here, coming up in just a bit, on either side of the tram, you are gonna notice movie posters. Now, these represent just a few of the thousands of movies that we've made right here at Universal Studios. Now, we started back in 1913. Our founder, Carl Lemley, opened the movie studio. Then in 1915, he opened it up to the public. He wanted to give guests an up-close look at the hustle and bustle and glamour of Hollywood and their favorite movies and then TV shows being filmed. Of course, in 1964, the studio tour was born. It was then and is still today the crown jewel of Universal Studios taking guests behind the scenes. I've been on that tour so many times since I was a kid. Just like that again. The first time I went on the Universal World, we did the tour. I grew up in Los Angeles and that was like the place to go and see Jaws. I got my introduction to Universal Studios through the tour. So then to be in the movies and seeing the trams drive by, it's very overwhelming. One of the coolest things actually about shooting for Universal is sometimes you get to shoot on the lot and then you look over and it's like there's Jaws or like there's the flash flood and all those trams are riding around. You can't, it's the coolest thing ever. 1979. Back then, the tram drivers were you know, a little reckless and crazy, but there's no restriction on cars going anywhere. We used to drive all over and kind of deal with them back and forth. I have so many amazing memories of the lot when we were shooting Back in the Future. Being here brings me back in time. I'll tell you that. The tram would come through, the tourists would see Michael J. Fox, and there's a ticket about the camera snip, snip, snip. So one day, Michael J. Fox had his own camera. Every time the tourists came through and snapped their pictures, he ran out and started taking pictures of them. Now we are headed down to what we call our front lot. This is where the majority of the hustle and bustle happens. And on our front lot, we have quite a few sound stages. Now a sound stage is essentially a giant soundproof room. Our sound stages are about 98% soundproof. Directors often prefer them because it gives them a controlled and quiet place to do their filming. There are currently 36 sound stages here on the Universal lot. And as we make our way down the hill here, take a look over on your left hand side. You're gonna see this large building here. That is Sound Stage 12. It's one of the largest sound stages here on the Universal lot. And it's been used in the past for some iconic movie sets, including Frankenstein's Laboratory, Dracula's Castle, Scarface's Mansion, and it was used as a visitor center for Jurassic Park. <laughs> Well, 
on your screens. You can see what Soundstage 12 looks like on the inside when it's not being used by production. But now that we've made it fully onto the front lot, over on your left-hand side, you'll see a few more sound stages. We have 11, 10, 9. Now, these three were actually used in the past for the HBO Max show, Max, starring Gene Smart. They still shoot here on the lot. They just moved to sound stages 40 and 41. However, most recently, 11, 10, and 9 were used for the show Grand Crew. You can check that out on Peacock. And then we have sound stages 8 and 7, which are coming up here on our left-hand side. Those were used in the past for the show Superstore. That starred America Ferreira, Ben Feldman, and Mark McKinney. They have six seasons here on the Universal lot. You can check out all six seasons now on Peacock. However, nowadays, 8, 7, and 14, which is going to be coming up in just a bit once we round this corner, they're all being used for the show Bel Air. Can you just grab me a water when you yeah, so what it is, you put egg on, on the cheese. You put cheese on the eggs, on the cheese. This one. Whoa, how many seats do you think are in? No, it's got to be a lot. Man, we could probably fit the whole Bel Air cast and crew. No, we got to get one of these from Mitch. Who <laughs> picked Sure. You're lucky to know the Ben's family mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? I don't know, I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I love the four-year set where Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here, too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath. Oh, yeah, 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 that was my favorite. I'm my toes. No, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talented crew who put it all together from hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Yes, yo, Transpo's the best. Yeah, they have the sweetest rides for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're going to get a ride like this, we'd better go talk to Transpo now and let these people get back to their tour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. As long as I get to drive. Oh, not if I've got the keys. Oh, not for long. Step down, man. Of course, that's Shabari Banks and Ali Shulatin from the show Bel Air, available now on Peacock. They've got two seasons up there, and they're getting ready to start their third season here on the Universal lot. On your right hand side, you'll see sound stages 16 and 17. Now, these were used in the past for the show Good Girls that start Christina Hendricks, Mae Whitman, and Retta. And then we have sound stages 18 and 19 still on our right hand side. Now, those were used in the past for the show The Good Place that starred Ted Danson and Kristen Bell. They had four seasons here on the Universal lot. You can check out all four seasons now on Peacock. However, nowadays, 18 and 19 are being used for the reboot of Quantum Leap, starring Raymond Lee, Nan Rissa Lee, and Ernie Hudson. That's available now on NBC. They've actually got a second season coming out later this fall on NBC. Actually, while we pass through here, on your right-hand side, you might have to crane your neck a little, but the doors are open on Soundstage 19, so you get a little peek inside there. Usually, they don't have the doors open, uh, so you can see what they're doing in there. It looks like a dance rehearsal. Kind of cool. Now, over on your left-hand side, you're going to see uh, quite a few buildings here. These are what we call our bungalows. Now, these used to be dressing rooms for very famous stars like Doris Day, Ron Hudson, Tony Curtis, Jimmy Stewart. However, nowadays, they're offices for some of the top writers and directors in town, like Illumination Entertainment. They're the ones who brought you Despicable Me, Those Minions, Secret Life of Pets, the movie Sing 1 and 2, and most recently, the Super Mario Brothers movie. They did that in partnership with Nintendo. Now, coming up in just a bit on our left-hand side, it's going to be a very famous bungalow. That's going to be Bungalow 5195. Now, it is currently home to the De Laurentiis Company. They're the ones who brought you the legend of Hannibal to the small and the big screen. But you might notice next to this 5195 here on our left-hand side, a very familiar silhouette. The incomparable Alfred Hitchcock, the master of chills and thrills. Known for movies like Psycho, Vertigo, The Birds, Rear Window. The reason he's on that building, that used to be his old office. Uh, still on your left-hand side, you'll see sound stages 25 and 26. Now, you'll notice these windows in the front. These are actually production offices, and they're attached to these two sound stages, making them a one-stop shop for production. Uh, they're currently being used for the show Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez and his daughter, Mayan Lopez. But they were used in the past for two seasons of the show Keenan, starring Keenan Thompson, as well as the reboot of Will and Grace. But as you can see, we have left our front lot behind because we're taking you into our back lot. This is where we shoot the big stuff. Because a lot of times, filmmakers, they want to shoot big city sequences, but they need a controlled and safe area to do that. That's exactly what they get to do here. Welcome to our Metropolitan sets. 
Uh, these buildings might look very strong and sturdy, which they are, they totally are, but they might also look like there's a whole lot going on inside. There's nothing going on inside these buildings, because these buildings, they're fake. They're completely fake. They're what we call facades. In fact, on your screens, that's what most of the buildings out here on the back lot look like on the inside. Coming around the corner, you get a great shot of our brownstone street. You might recognize it from the movie Bruce Almighty. Like bad. Outside good. We have left our brownstone street behind to take you to the quiet town of Hill Valley, California, or Courthouse Square. Back to the feature fans, this one is for you. Take a look over on your left hand side. That is the famous clock tower that Doc Brown hung from in the first Back to the Feature movie. However, looking at that clock tower, you might notice it does look a little bit different now than it did in the movie. In the movie, there were large pillars in front. Now they're separate wall. Well, the reason for that, those pillars became so recognizable that any filmmakers that shot here after Back to the Feature had to change the building's appearance. Otherwise, people would just think, ah, oh, Back to the Feature. So that brick wall is a great example of what we call a facade. Just the front the sides then your imagination fills in the rest now let me welcome you to our very famous new york street uh you've used our new york street over the years for countless tv shows music videos movies you name it in fact any uh k-pop fans on board specifically blackpink jisoo her flower music video that was shot here on our new york street and the show american ninja warrior they've shot here quite a few times hey studio tour this is akbar baja via miller and did you know that we film american ninja warrior right here on New York Street. In fact, we built the entire course in just a few days. Take a look. Be sure to watch this season on Mondays on NBC and stream next day on Peacock. Uh, over the years, Universal Studios has collaborated with many award-winning directors like Steven Spielberg, Ron Howard, Christopher Nolan, and of course, director Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight when I was and I wanted to be a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up an adventure. Cold literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. That's right. Adventure awaits us. So hang on tight to your belongings. Keep your hands, arms, legs, selfie sticks, wands inside at all times. And of course, as always, remain seated. I hope you're ready. Hang on tight. And welcome to Skull Island. Okay, now a uh, show of hands. Who here is covered in dinosaur spit? Yeah, oh, okay. You know what? You want to get that checked. Okay, that's probably not good. <laughs> now you can put away your 3D glasses for now or leave them on. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but hang on to them because you might need them later. Uh, director Peter Jackson created that spectacle with his team over at Weta FX. That's a production company that's based in New Zealand. They're known for movies like King Kong, as well as Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. They worked on the original Avatar movie, as well as one that recently came out, Avatar The Way of Water. Now, that was projected onto screens that were over 40 feet high and 180 feet long. That was done using CGI, Computer Generated Imagery. Now, I know you all enjoyed it, but let's check in with the big man himself, huh? How's it going, Mr. Kong? With a bunch of external tour, the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions. There's creatures coming out of them. They're seeing things on this side and T Rexes from the other side. They're looking at the movie. They're always going to look at people in the middle. They're looking straight ahead. They're looking at the shot that they're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this ride on those canoes that they're used to working on, there's no cuts. Because it's one giant shot and this train that's driving along this island, where the train is from. This train represents the 
before the screen is 10 meters away, you will be creating about 50 minutes of a feature song. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, and presenting them to the audience, it's a hell of a ride. Now, you might recall during that ride, a portion of this tram became part of the movie. And when that happens, we call that a picture car. Now, a picture car is a car that is featured in a movie or driven by an actor, and it takes on almost a persona of its own. Some of these picture cars end up becoming just as famous as the actors that drove them. For my car fans, let me welcome you to our picture car collection. Starting us off is the yellow Ford from American Graffiti. Next to that, we have the Ferrari from Magna P.I. Funny thing about that Ferrari, though, it's a Volkswagen engine and a Ferrari shell. It's uh, all about what's on the outside here in Hollywood, right, guys? Uh, the eco-friendly options, you would think of the Flintstones cars, powered by V. No, actually, both cart interiors. One of our more recent additions, the Ford Anglia from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And ooh, we have the Gyrosphere. Okay, now that was heavily featured in the first and second Jurassic World movies. However, you might notice there's no glass on the Gyrosphere. Well, when you're on a film set, there's close to 100 plus people running around. You have all the lights, all of the equipment, and those things reflect in glass. So the filmmakers actually chose to shoot without the glass. And then later with computers, CGI, computer-generated imagery, they added in the glass, as well as all those complicated reflections like the grass, the volcano, and of course, those dinosaurs. Now, here at Universal Studios, we love dinosaurs. And so much that we actually keep them on the lot, in cages. That's right. Welcome. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Now, we have a variety of dinosaurs that we keep here on the lot. However, we do keep them in cages because they are relatively poisonous. Not to worry, though, we actually keep them right up front and... Uh, okay, you know, that's kind of a small cage, the dinosaurs. They are fairly large, so we do keep them. Oh, okay, boy, this cage is empty. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to put on some nice music. I will just, um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Jamie, where are the dinosaurs? You don't know? Is that an email or something? I never read those. Oh, wow. Okay, you know, I'm going to make something up. Yeah. Um, okay, hi, guys. So the dinosaurs, they are, um... On a walk, they're free range dinosaurs. They're not out on the loose though, which is good. Because they do this thing where they hide in bushes and then they. Oh! Oh, wow, that's gross. Okay. Um, you know what? Before they get a chance to go ahead and. Ooh. Okay, hey, part two. Guys, don't worry. That's just venom. It's acid. No, stop it. Now you notice these trees on the other side of you, they are hollow, and it's not because they're prehistoric, it's because they're fake. These are steel frames that we wrapped with chicken wire, put foam padding on, and then painted and texturized to make them look like prehistoric trees. The reason we do that, well, when you're on a film set, everything is go, 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 and ain't nobody got time to move around a real tree. Now, you might recall in Jurassic Park, weather played a very important role in that movie. Now, I got a great little weather demonstration for you coming up, but we have to get into position before they can actually start the demo. So, while we're doing that, let's take a look at this moment from Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Start Academy Award winner Julian. Hey, I guess they started. Wait, where's the? Okay, I'm sorry. Just give me, um, give me one second here. Um, hi, hi. Are you guys still doing the water? You are. Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, if you look above, you'll see there's a sprinkler system. It shoots water up into the sky and then lets it fall down naturally to the ground, kind of like rain. And as you can see, it is raining mostly on the left-hand side of the tram, not so much on the right side. This is what we call a 50-50% chance of rain. Okay. Yeah, that's probably, probably good. Um, oh, where'd it go? But, hi! Hi! Thank you! What? No, I can't understand you with the mask. What do you mean it's jammed? Oh, no. It drops the water down in what we call drop tanks. And at the bottom of the hill, we have drains that 
recycle the water back up so we can do it however many times we'd like. Also, I didn't have any buddies in a control room controlling that. No, that was all controlled by your driver, Jamie. Well done, Jamie. <laughs> now this area here is what's known as Old Mexico, but of course in the early days of filmmaking, it was known as Old Mexico. Uh, this was the island of Tortuga for Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean. It was also used for Nacho Libre starring Jack Black and uh, any Lady Gaga fans on board for Judas music video. That was shot here as well. Oh, also, Criminal Minds Beyond Borders, season two. There's an episode in there where they go to Tijuana. This was used for that as well. But we're gonna cross this border out of old Mexico and take you into Six Points, Texas. That's right, y'all. This is where we film all of our Western TV shows and movies. And uh, since we are in the Western sets, I do have a mandatory safety reminder. We are about halfway through the tour. So if you have an emergency of any kind, like a medical emergency, or you've dropped an item of value off the side of the tram, reach up and pull that red emergency cord overhead. The ride will stop, and I'll be back to help you as soon as it is safe for me to do so. Otherwise, please remain seated. Uh, as you can see, the West is as wild as ever inside of the dressmaker shop of all places. <laughs> now, you will have seen our Six Points Texas in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that starred Brad Pitt, Mark Wahlberg, and Leonardo DiCaprio, as directed by Quentin Tarantino. You remember there in that movie, there's quite a large portion of the film where Leonardo's character, Rick Dalton, goes to film a western. All of the scenes were shot here in our Six Points Texas. Now, most recently, we used our Six Points Texas for the reboot of Quantum Leap, starring Raymond Lee and Rissa Lee and Ernie Hudson, episode six, The Time Jumps, season one of the Cowboy. It's a very fun episode. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. But as we leave our Six Points Texas behind, I'd like you to take a look over on your left-hand side. Off in the distance there, you're going to see a few more sound stages. Now, sound stages 30 and 31, those are home to the voice. And then next to that, we have sound stages 32 and 33. Those were used in the past for Jimmy Fallon's show, That's My Jam. Hey, I'm Jimmy Fallon, and welcome to That's My Jam! We are back for season two! Welcome to the Poppy Zone! We got all-star teams going head-to-head. -head. What about the Wolf Day bus? Here at Universal Studios, we like to say the world is literally around the corner. And I'm about to prove it to you as we take you from the Wild West to France. Or Spain. Or Germany. Really, anywhere in Europe you want to go, we can take you there. Welcome to Little Europe. Now, you might recognize Little Europe as the small country of Genovia for Princess Diaries 2, a royal engagement. Princess Mia Thermopolis, played by Academy Award winner Anne Hathaway, led a very young Abigail Breslin through the streets of Genovia during a parade. This was also used for Roger, Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella. That was the one that starred Brandy, with the Houston, Whoopi Goldberg, Renette Peters, Victor Barber, Jason Alexander, Paula Montalban, Goff. Everybody was in that movie. But most recently, we used our little Europe as the good place for the show, The Good Place. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I've never, ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Maybe it's not all that bad. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Well, on your right-hand side, this courtyard here is what we call the Court of Miracles. It's where many universal monsters got their start. I mean, we practically invented the monster genre with classics like uh, Frankenstein, the Wolfman. Oh, on your left-hand side, the Invisible Man. Ah, gotcha, guys. Now, you may not know this, but there are actually two versions of the original Dracula movie. There is an English version and a Spanish version, and both of those versions shot simultaneously. I am Dracula. Soy Dracula. I am so 
excited for you guys because we never take this route. Like I've worked here for eight years. We have never gone down this road. Coming up on your right hand side, great opportunity for some pictures. This is our very famous Denver Street. Denver Street is the oldest set here on the Universal lot. And by old, I mean it's from the OG Western era. Now I do have a bit of a confession to make. I love Westerns. Okay. I was raised on Westerns. I mean, my name is Cody after Cody, Wyoming. Hello. My favorite part of a Western was, of course, a proper bar fight. Now, as much as I love my Westerns, I could use a bit of a vacation like a, oh, Amity Island. Yes, let's go there. Now, okay, I know it says the beach is closed. That's just because they had a little tiny shark problem. Nothing to worry about. They caught the shark. And you know what? My buddy George, he is the police chief around these parts. He said it's totally fine if we come on down and hang out. I want to say hi to George. I've not seen him in a hot hi, minute. Now, he did say he was going to be in the water tonight, so I'll see him in the boat. He's probably down there already. That's fine. We'll just wait for... What is that? What is that, a shark? Does George see that? Okay, uh, one second. Oh, George? George Borgi. Hey, hi. Got something really important to tell you. No, I need you to pay attention, George, because there's a shark in the... Oh, George? Do you see it? It's right there. George? Oh. Well, I guess I don't have a ride home from work today. That's fine. I'll figure it out. Now, as we move across the pier here, remember to stay seated. George told me he put some bait on a barrel. Oh, probably that one out there in the water. So if the shark gets it, then it's all good, right? Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Wait, why is that moving? Wait, is that gasoline in this economy? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That bill's kind of nice right about now. But oh no, take a seat because we're going to need a bigger truck. <laughs> now, that shark worked pretty well, if I do say so, unlike the shark in the movie Jaws. Now, the shark in the movie Jaws, his name was Bruce. And, um, yes, he was named after Steven Spielberg's lawyer. Uh, funny thing about Bruce, they actually test drove him before filming in a freshwater pit. But they shot the movie in the Atlantic Ocean, which, of course, is salt water. So on the first day of filming, when they placed Bruce into the water, he broke down and he sunk to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. That led the crew to rename the production of Jaws into, well, Flaws. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio mics. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough for a while there in the face of that. Also, keep in mind, Steven Spielberg, only 27 years old when he directed Jaws. Now, I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the tour that a lot of our set pieces here on the Universal lot are facades, just the front and the sides of buildings, and your imagination fills in the rest. And I'll show you this clip again on your screens right here. This is what most of the buildings out here on the back lot look like on the inside. We don't actually build interiors. Typically, we'll film the actors walking into the building, then we'll cut and we'll go to a soundstage where we have the interior built on the inside. However, we do have a few exceptions to that rule. And over on your right-hand side, hopefully you can see it's a two-story house. It's structurally sounded safe enough to shoot on both levels. That's what makes it a practical set. That's what we call our chicken ranch. It was originally built for the movie musical, The Best Little Horror House in Texas, which starred Dolly Parton and Burt Reynolds. And coming up on your left-hand side is the beginning of our Colonial Street. Colonial Street has been used for countless iconic TV shows like The Munsters, Leave it to Beaver, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, ABC's Desperate Housewives, and most recently, Mindy Kaling's show, Never Have I Ever. They've actually done four seasons here on the Universal lot, and they just started airing that fourth and final season uh, earlier this month on Netflix. 
Now, since we are at this point of the tour, I do have a final mandatory safety reminder. We have about 15 to 20 minutes left in the tour. So if you have an emergency of any kind, like a medical emergency, or you dropped an item of value off the side of the tram, reach up and pull that red emergency cord overhead. The ride will stop, and I'll be back to help you as soon as it is safe for me to do so. Otherwise, please remain seated. All right, now we call this road our wilderness road because we use either side of the road for filming. On your left-hand side, this hill here with the bushes and the trees, this was used for the Netflix movie Bird Box that starred Academy Award winner Sandra Bullock. And we also used this street to stage a limo crash for the show 911 on FX. And that limousine could be counted as a picture car. And we have a few more picture cars coming up in just a second. Once we round this corner, they're going to be on your right-hand side. Now, a picture car can be an essential tool for filmmakers when it comes to setting the mood, setting the tone, telling us where we are without actually telling us where we are. For example, take that red double-decker bus, place that in the background of a scene, you know immediately we're in London, England. Now, one of my favorite picture cars is coming up in just a second. It's the cream-colored Ford that Marion Crane drove in the movie Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. This is the Bates Motel here on your right-hand side. You know, I hear the bed and breakfast is to die for. Oh, there's Norman hanging out in the office there. I hear he's a real lady killer. Even though I think he's more of a mama's boy. You know, people are so mean to Norman, calling him all kinds of names like a psychopath. But you know what? At least he's on a path. <laughs> Coming up on our left-hand side is the Bates house. You know, I wonder if Mother's home. Oh, yep. There she is up in the top floor there just rocking away. Hey, Mother. You know, you're looking a little stiff these days. You might want to consider doing some yoga or Pilates or a moisturizer. I don't know, something. Oh, we are leaving the world of Psycho behind to take you to a different world. Our world. And the war of the worlds set. Oh, War of the Worlds was directed by Steven Spielberg. It starred Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. You see this airplane on your left-hand side? It might look real to you. That's because it is. That is a real 747 that Steven Spielberg purchased from an airplane graveyard, cut into pieces because he couldn't fit it on the freeways, delivered here on Mack trucks, and then of course destroyed for this moment in the movie. And if you take a look at all the set decoration here, keep in mind this moment in the movie it lasted for three minutes. Mr. Spielberg did all of this for just three minutes. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. When we first began to sit down to talk about the world, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep your eyes on me. That's it. Come on, listen. I want you to close your eyes, okay? Okay. Now I'm closed. Come on. Robbie, get in. Get in. So we have Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and now we have War of the Worlds, directed by Steven Spielberg. These are generation-defining directors, and Universal is thrilled to have partnered with yet another generation-defining director, Academy Award-winning writer-director Jordan Peele, for his sci-fi thriller, Nope. And we are going to be passing by Jupiter's Claim, the actual sets used in the production of Nope. You'll see that on your right-hand side. Now, you might be wondering, are we going to go through Jupiter's Claim? Unfortunately, I have to say, Nope. They are in the midst of getting a facelift, like everyone else here in Hollywood, but you can see more of Nope on your screens. What's up, Studio Tour? I'm Kiki Palmer from Jordan Peele's film, Nope. What's a bad miracle? Well, you'll have to see our movie to answer that one. Until then, I hope you enjoy your visit to Jupiter's Claim. Did you see a UFO in that cloud? Yeah. I ain't never seen yeah. nothing like this. Are you ready? Yeah. Run! It's a 
of course, stars Daniel Kluya, Kiki Palmer, Stephen Yoon, and Brandon Perea. Now, you all have pretty much seen the ins and the outs of how we do things here at Universal Studios, but I think it's time for you to be a little bit more involved. So, here's what we're going to do. I'd like you to hang on tight to your belongings, keep your hands, arms, legs, selfie sticks, wands inside at all times, and of course, as always, remain seated. We are going to be throwing you into an action sequence with the crew from Fast and Furious. All right, now, here is your backstory on board. There is a special witness. I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you witnessed, but you witnessed something. And Owen Shaw is after this entire tram. So we're gonna hide out in this garage here and wait for, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm getting something. Uh, hello? My name is Roman Pierce. That is a great example of modern day filmmaking. Now we have reached the end of our tour, but I do have a couple of thank yous I need to give out. First off, please join me in saying thank you to our driver, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Ah. Yo, guys, if it wasn't for her, we'd all just be sitting here in the dark, staring at each other. Not as much fun, right? Last but not least, I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for taking the studio tour with me and for making Universal Studios the entertainment capital of L.A. Keep in mind, the park does close tonight at 10 o'clock. It is 9.05 now, so you still have time for fun in the theme park. Download the Universal app on the Apple Store or Google Play Store. It's free, and you'll get up-to-date wait times and show times for everything in the park today. It is a huge time saver. Trust me on that one. You can check out show times for things like the Dark Arts and Hogwarts Castle and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You might have seen part of it. There's a Patronus in the sky for that show. You definitely don't want to miss it. It's going to be, I think, every 25 minutes until closing in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Now, as you disembark, you will notice there are bins for your 3D glasses. Be sure you put your 3D glasses in there and not your real ones. And to our season pass holders, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. If you are not a season pass holder and you want to find out how you can become one, visit the box office or any of our season pass kiosks we have scattered throughout the park. They'll be able to help you out. Now, that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me on the World Famous Universal Studios Tour. Thank you for the privilege of your time. As we say in the movies, that's a wrap. My name is Cody, and I'm brought to you by my parents. See you later, guys.